Hi everybody, this is the Crimson Dynamo here. This is my first attempt at a YouTube video, so if I make a mess of it, please forgive me. Um, this is a video about uh, the Heathkit Microprocessor Trainer ET3400. I had one of these uh, when I was whoa, 20 odd years old, and it taught me a lot about microprocessors, how to program them in machine code, taught me about microprocessor interfacing techniques, uh, digital electronics, and uh, it set me off um, and help, has helped me throughout my career. Um, and I thought I'd share with you the experience of building one of these from scratch, because luckily a couple of weeks ago, I spotted a this Heathkit um, kit on eBay. Uh, it was incomplete, um, so there were some bits missing. Um, but looking at what was missing, I thought that I could probably work around that. Um, so here's just a review of um, what sort of progress I make. And if you're interested, I'll keep doing these videos and we can move along together and hopefully get the thing up and running and working. And that'll be good fun. So if you're wondering what a microprocessor trainer ET3400 looks like, Let's open this fading manual, and there it is. Just have a quick zoom in there. Okay, so um, we've got a hex keyboard. We've got some bread, a breadboarding area down here. We've got some space for digital I/O switches and some LEDs. Uh, we've got some uh, memory up here. And the memory is a grand total of 1K. That's not one meg, it's not one gig, it's 1K. That's 1,024 bytes. We've got the wonderful Motorola 6800 processor. That's an 8-bit processor. It's not the 68000 like you've got in the early Max. This is a real 6800 processor. We've got one kilobyte of ROM. Uh, we've got six seven-segment LED displays. And uh, using this process tra processor trainer, um, there is a course that went along with it, which I don't have, but um, it, would, it taught me a lot, um, as I said, about how microprocessors work, how to interface to them, and how to program them. Just to show you how ancient this thing is, move over here, zoom in again, there we go, copyright 1977. Now I had one of these probably about that time, so it must have been very new at that time. So I was very lucky that my father bought me the uh, fully assembled kit, but I really wanted to have had the experience of building the thing back then. And finally, it looks like I'm going to get the experience of building it now. Uh, these things go for um, in sort of like a complete state, anything from 150 quid upwards on eBay, though you might get one cheaper. Uh, this one cost me the grand sum of £56 and uh, the things that were missing were um, a power um, conversion chip, uh, UA309K, which is just an 8 volt, sorry, a 5 volt uh, regulator. Um, there are some strips missing off the, uh, mother, the, 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 the breadboard and uh, there's a couple of other bits and bobs, but nothing particularly major. I think the worst thing is probably the on-off standby switch, which you can see on the diagram up here, well, vaguely. Um, and that's a triple pole, double throw switch. And if anything, it's the only thing I'm currently having a problem sourcing, though I am, I've got some irons in the fire, uh, including a guy in the States who's got the original Heathkit part, but it's just not responding to my email right now. So I'm sure I'll make progress on that. But anyway, before we start, I thought I'd just give you a review of what's in the kit. Firstly, we have this manual. It teaches you, um, it gives you an introduction about the kit itself. It tells you what tools you need. Then describes resistors. We've then got the parts list, which is fairly extensive, as you can see. Then teaches you how to go about the step-by-step -step assembly and how to follow this guide and how to solder. 
And there's then the step-by-step -step instructions, which go on for quite a few pages. Oops, too far. Okay, final assembly here. And we actually uh, put the thing together in its case. And we've then got some programs for teachers how to uh, how to do a little bit of programming and exercise this thing. And we've also got a listing of the contents of the ROM. So um, you can do various things with that. Um, I've got a memory map, which is useful if you don't know what one of those is. And we've got the 6800 instruction set, how to drive the LEDs. Um, I've got a, a debugging guide. In addition, we have this illustration booklet, which includes pictorials that describe all the parts using the references A1, A2, G5, G11, etc. Um, this is the case for the UA309K, which is the missing um, power regulator that I was talking about, which you can see up here, D1. Um, we're also missing one of these things, a six-way um, solder lug uh, terminal block, but I've managed to source some eight-way ones and I'm just going to cut those down. Um, everything else, like I say, seems to be there. Uh, one of these bolts doesn't have a head on it, but that's not going to stop me. And down here, element E1 is the triple pole double throw switch, and that's the one I'm having a problem sourcing at the moment. If we look further in, we're getting, you know, we've got uh, pictures of the layout, we've got the board itself, how to wire up the uh, mains, uh, we've got um, a layout including where the keys are, the hex displays, the breadboarding area, what each of the keys on the hex keypad does. Uh, we've got um, how to test the LED lights and the LED switches. Uh, we've got stuff about testing uh, various other aspects of uh, the trainer. And the various other things that are referred to in the instruction book. Um, and we've also got a very useful x-ray view of the board here so we can actually see where the tracks go if we ever need to diagnose something. And here is the circuit diagram for the ET3400. Um, so we've got the power supply circuit up here, which uh, provides plus five volts, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. Uh, there are also some um, square wave outputs. So we've got line frequency here, and we've also got a one hertz signal there, which can be used in your experiments. Um, here we've got uh, a little block uh, which has got some switches in which you can use when we're doing our experiments. We've got some single LED displays that we can use. Uh, here's the microprocessor. Uh, here is the keyboard. Here is some address decoding logic and uh, tri-state buffers. We've got the RAM which is four um, 2112 chips which are 4 bit wide 512 words. So that's 512 words Four bits each multiplied by two gives us 1K, 1024 bytes. We've got a decoder here which drives the um, selection for the, um, the latches on the data bus that then drive the LED displays. And there is then um, an expansion connector on the board that we could put something in and we could connect to for diagnostics or um, interfacing. And there was an ETA3400 kit which had some ROM in it, it had a mini basic and um, and you could actually connect it to a tape recorder and load and save your programs using that which meant that you didn't have to type everything in on your hex keyboard the next time you wanted to put a program in. And if we ever found that we'd uh, burnt out something that we were soldering onto the kit or anything like that or there were some parts missing we could always just use this wonderful Heath kit parts price list and ordering um, form and we could send an order off to uh, Heath kit and they would send us the bit. Uh, unfortunately, my Heath kit are no longer there. Oh look, this is from the 4th of the 3rd, 1980. So uh, that gives an idea of the sort of age of this kit. Uh, I thought it was a 77, but that must just be the copyright of the original 
um, kit design so this looks like it's from 1980 so okay it's only a mere uh, 38 years old rather than 42 like I thought it might be or 40 like I thought it might be never mind here is the uh, actual front panel of the ET3400 um, so you can see with reference to the diagram that was on the front page of the manual here's the keyboard area here's the breadboarding area address buffers here the switch would go down here the eight um, switches will have the uh, eight individual LEDs here control buffer logic here so we can access various parts various buff parts of the um, uh, the buses that we can use that's tri-state tri -state control the interrupt line uh, valid memory address the halt line non-maskable interrupt reset read write um, we've also got um, access to the uh, line frequency that i described on the circuit diagram we've got access to the one hertz um, square wave um, here's uh, the data io uh, buffers this is where the cpu will go here's the rom 1k of it Here's the keyboard buffer that's used to read these um, the keyboard. We've got a segment test here where we can just short out a couple of pins and the uh, seven segment LED displays, six of them here, will all light up so we can check that the segments all work. This HINZVC, um, they are used to check status bits in the 6800 processor. So we can, um, using the keys down here, we can have a look at the state of the status register when we're debugging programs. Here's where the RAM goes for chips. And uh, then this bit is actually hidden by the, the front, the, the, the sort of top of the panel of the case. It's got the power switch and it's got a load of um, sort of like logic um, and address selections and buffers and what have you. We've got, uh, uh, we've got some power regulation up here and the big 309 um, missing 5 volt regulator is actually mounted on an aluminium plate uh, because it uh, needs needs a heat sink. And here is the uh, reverse side of the board which is where we're going to do some soldering and by the look of it it's a lot of soldering. Um, most of the chips are socketed, um, so uh, uh, at least we're not going to be soldering and uh, potentially burning things out. But even so, there's quite a bit to do here. Um, I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the other parts now. Here is the blue uh, plastic case for the ET3400. Uh, power LED there. The missing switch will go there. Oh, something else I forgot to mention was that all of the labels in the kit are also missing. So the label should go here. It says Heath kit on it and on off standby. Um, all of the labels for the hex keyboard are missing. Um, there's a power warning label. Um, just take the top off here. Um, a bit of damage here on this little part of the inside of the case. This is where the high voltage stuff goes. So the mains comes in here, goes through there. We've then got a fuse within here and some distribution wiring on the missing six pin uh, solder lug terminal and then the stuff go the the, the power um, goes to the bridge rectifier at the top part of the um, uh, circuit board that we looked at earlier this i'm not particularly worried about i might uh, try to uh, uh, make it uh, a bit more secure because obviously it's going to have mains voltage in it but when the kit's finished you won't be able to see anything in terms of the labels, um, I'm sure I'll be able to either print them myself or I'll just get them made. Uh, it's not going to cause an issue. So here's some of the hardware that comes with the kit. We've got the uh, mains cord. Um, so this is obviously, um, uh, I think that's American, but uh, I'll, I'll work that out. We've got the mains transformer and this can be wired for 110 or 240 volts. And there's coverage for both in the, in the uh, manual. We've got the mounting plate here for the um, uh, the power regulator I was mentioning earlier. We've got a small breadboard here into which we manually have to insert these strips. Uh, and apparently there are a few of these missing, but uh, even if I've got to take apart another breadboard to uh, assemble this and get it right, that's good. It's not a problem. 
Um, also, there were some um, strips that sit under this to sort of like rest it on the um, the main circuit board, and they're also missing. But I'll probably use some draft excluder or something similar. Then continue on the hardware front. Uh, we've got a, a really ancient paper bag with some numbers on it containing all this stuff. So we've got some uh, nuts, bolts, screws, spacers, tags, all the tags. Uh, we've got some other small nuts and bolts, sorry, um, screws and spacers and uh, tags. And we've got the, uh, the segment testing pins there. We've got uh, some specifically sized bits of wire of different colors. Uh, I've got some uh, some braid, got a small piece of heat shrink sort of tubing. Um, we've got the keys, uh, the key switches and the key tops, as I say, with no labels on. We've got the circuit board onto which we will build these keys. And Heathkit in their uh, infinite wisdom even included some solder with it. Um, I'm sure this will be lead solder rather than lead free. But I actually prefer using lead solder anyway because uh, I find it uh, easy to work with. So here's more hardware. We've got some four pin uh, breadboard connectors, We've got some eight pin breadboard connectors. And some of these are the um, ancient, nicely paper, um, none of your rubbishy plastic um, bags into which the uh, various components are being placed. And here's the contents of the first three of those six bags. We've got the 6800 processor, um, Motorola chip, 40 pin dual inline package. We've got various um, um, IC sockets. I think we've got 14 and 16 way. And we've then got some capacitors. And the contents of the remaining three bags, we've got one of our 2112 memory chips. We've got some more sockets. These ones are the 14 pin ones. That must have been the 16. And we've got our six, seven segment LED displays. Unfortunately, because of the way they've been stored, at least one of them's got a leg missing. So uh, I'm gonna have to source a couple more of these. I think they're TIL 312s um, and they're red. So that'll be a, another interesting challenge. Then we've got the uh, 40 pin socket for the processor. Those are the digital input switches that we'll be using. Uh, that's the uh, RAM, sorry, the ROM uh, socket. We've then got various chips in here. Um, and I've checked them all and the other 2112 chip is here. Um, this kit only came with 512 bytes of RAM. So um, I recently paid 10 pounds uh, for another two 2112 chips, which will take my ET3400 to um, the grand total of 1024 bytes. And I've also got a couple of, um, sorry, four other LED IC sockets. Here we've got a bag, it's got uh, various bits. Uh, we've got capacitors, we've got the slow blow fuse, we've got the individual LEDs for the uh, digital IO, fuse holder, um, bits, uh, capacitors, diodes, what else have we got in here? Well, that's the mounting clip for the uh, power LED. Here we've got some more hardware, the feet, a cable tie, a solder lug. Um, not sure what that red coil of wire is for because it's not actually in the parts list. Um, as, the, as are these grommets and uh, that blue and black grommet. That's the, um, I think that's a TO3 mount for the uh, missing UA309K uh, power regulator. Got some electrolytic capacitors. That's the top for the high voltage box that's broken within the case. There's the power LED and that's one of the um, 12 volt regulators. Uh, the 12 volts is not actually used in the trainer, um, but um, they were thoughtful enough to put a plus and minus 12 volt supply in, which would be useful for RS232. And then we've got some more of these exciting little brown paper packages. And here we've got uh, various resistors. These are going to be the um, current limiting transistor, sorry, current limiting resistors for the seven segment LEDs, I suspect, because there's quite a few of them. Various other, I've uh, got a couple of half watt ones in there. Mostly these are quarter watt ones. 
um, then got, I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, oh, there's the um, second 2112 um, memory chip, and there is the ROM. Okay, so here's the final two bits of hardware uh, for the kit. Um, this uh, multicolored ribbon cable looks um, newer than the kit does, and I can't actually find it on the parts list, so I suspect that uh, the guy who actually put the kit uh, check the kit out and put it on eBay you might just have sneaked this in and not realized it wasn't part of the kit now this yellow cable well, yellow wire here um, when I checked out the parts list I read down these different types of parts and carefully checked them off and when I was looking at the yellow wire I thought wow I've got more than 20 inches of yellow wire I've got quite a lot more um, and then uh, it wasn't until quite a bit later that I noticed this is not inches this is feet so hopefully this is 20 feet of yellow wire and uh, that just shows that now in the UK where we're using centimeters meters millimeters and the rest of it you just get uh, out of the habit of looking between, for the difference between inches and feet right so that's all the parts uh, I've shown you the documentation we've got um, for 56 pounds off eBay um, a 40 odd year old uh, unbuilt heath kit um, there's probably not that many of these left in the world, if any, um, so this might be a once-in-a-lifetime experience for all of us. If you like the video so far, just give me a thumbs up. If you don't, tell me why. Um, I know my sound quality is probably not up to much because I'm just using a, a cheap 4K um, sports camera. It's probably got a bit of uh, um, a few problems in terms of uh, the lens, but uh, uh, we'll see how we go. All right, thank you. Bye.